Hey everyone, Tom Morcus and Carrie Richards here from Infostack.io with a bunch of great guests. And we're going to have a panel discussion about what it takes to start a side hustle, how to earn extra income on the side, how to make money online, and really just kind of get your foot in the door, get that, that taste of, I think, with what is the start of financial freedom, honestly. And I think many of the people in, in our conversation today have had that experience uh, starting something on the side that grew into something way bigger than they ever imagined. And may, in many cases, it's full-time job, making full-time income, maybe better income than they ever made as an employee. So that's kind of the focus of today's conversation. Before we get to that, I want to do a quick intro of everybody we have here. So I'm going to kind of go around the horn. We'll start with Johnny Helen, who is an experienced web designer with 15 years of traction. For the last seven years, he's been a Shopify partner and expert. And he's been featured and profiled on the Shopify website and also won the Partners Film Contest with the film about the life of a Shopify partner. So thank you for being here, Johnny. We, have, we also have Joel, Joel and Natalie Rivera. Joel and Natalie are freedom junkies and serial entrepreneurs who empower indiepreneurs to create a purpose-driven business and fulfill their life's purpose. They have 60 plus online courses and over 60,000 students from 190 countries. And you can find their content at transformationacademy.com. So thank you, Joel and Natalie, for being here with us. Julie, uh, our, our next guest is Julianne Jones, and she is the no BS business mentor helping validated experts, change agents, and professionals define their processes, take their expertise online, and position themselves to reach their ideal clients. She's been sharing her message from the stage for the past 14 years, is an international coach, federation certified coach, and she's also the co-founder of a successful digital marketing agency. So Julianne, thank you for being here. We also have Laura Posey, who is the founder and chief instigator of Simple Success Plans. She works with entrepreneurs around the world to achieve their first six-figure paycheck from their own business. We also have Dana Wild with over 100,000 followers in 68 countries. Dana Wild is the author of Train Your Brain and featured in the hit movie, The Abundance Factor. After growing her own business from zero to a million dollars in a year, it, it, a year in 19 months, she now helps others do the same. And last but not least, we have Paul Miners, who is a productivity blogger and virtual consultant, and he built his business on the side while working full-time before he earned enough from consulting to quit his day job and go traveling with his wife. And I just want to say thank you all so much for being here. I really appreciate it. So it's the way I want to be here. Good, good. Thank you, guys. So the way I want to kick this off um, as we kind of have this conversation is I'd like to start a little bit with what each of you can, maybe one insight you can give from your story when you got started one thing that really that worked for you when you were just getting started, maybe one thing like as you, like the challenges you faced and one thing that that worked to get you started. I know there's a spectrum of, of timelines here. People who've just started more recently, people have been doing this for years now, but when you guys were getting started, what was like the thing that really kind of pushed you over that mark that, that allowed you to have like some initial success, you know, like starting your side hustle or starting your side business. And Paul, I'd love for you to take it away and we can start from there. Yeah, thank you, Tom. Yeah, I, I would say for me, the biggest thing would be uh, be willing to try different things and be willing to adapt and change from your initial plan. So for me, when I first got into this world of like building an online business, um, I was very much attracted to that idea of I'm going to make an online course and digital products and passive income and live on the beach. And it's this like sexy side of the online business, um, at, which I think a lot of people are, are attracted to. And, and I, I, I now do make money selling products, but it's really hard in the beginning, I think, to uh, build the audience, to get the traffic, to generate uh, enough income that way. Or for me, anyway, I found it really challenging to generate enough income that way to be able to quit my job, which was my primary goal at the time. And so, and I really had my blinders on and I was really focused on growing product revenue for a while. And in hindsight, I should have been willing to change sooner. That was a mistake that I definitely made. It was only when I was like, okay, step back. What else can I do here? What else can I try to generate an income? Uh, and then I was like, maybe I can do some consulting or something. Um, so it was only by deviating from my initial plan and be willing to be willing to try other things. Um, and, and after starting the consulting, within just a few months, I was replacing my salary uh, really easily. And so, it, yeah, it was, it was funny because in hindsight, I dedicated way too much time to trying to grow the products instead of trying other things. So that would be my number one advice, uh, piece of advice is just be willing to try other things. Uh, don't, don't feel like you have to stick with your plan. Plan, um, definitely be willing to adapt and change. And I know Laura, you had a, a slightly different experience when you got started. You actually kind of, I think, just went full on into it. You didn't kind of like really side. You just kind of, I think, what quit your job and started 
what you started. So that's a different, different approach, but tell us a little bit about kind of like what worked really well for you when you were. Just yeah. Doing. Yeah. I quit my nice big fat six figure sales manager job and just, you know, was like, ah, I'm going to go be an entrepreneur. I don't know. I'll do it, but we'll figure it out. And um, yeah, so I think for me, the thing that, that really helped, because I, I mean, I've been at this for 17 years, I didn't start in the online world because there wasn't a whole lot of online when I started. And, but the thing that we started doing right away was building our list. And so I just started going out, giving stuff away, doing speeches wherever I could possibly speak to share ideas and, and information. Um, and I would always do that in exchange for the list. And so um, from day one, we were building an email list. And so when we finally got around to like taking some of the stuff we were doing for consulting and, and training and putting that in, into some packages and, and doing online courses, we had 10 or 12,000 people on our list that we could go to that knew us, that we'd been sending a weekly newsletter to and just communicating with and, and just giving value. And so when we turned around and said, hey, we have this stuff to sell, they went, oh, wow. Okay, yeah, I've known you for a long time now. I'm absolutely willing to give you some money. And um, so I think building that, that list and, and just being willing to give away a whole lot of value in exchange for an email address really helped us get started. That's awesome. And Dana, I think you had something to say about that. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I hope at some point I get to talk deeply about mindset, but your question it caused me to think of something that really made a big shift in our growth, and that was uh, niching. And I think it's probably the number one mistake I see the people that we work with make is they, their uh, solution works for a lot of people, for everybody, just like many of our solutions work for a lot of people, but nobody hears you when you're doing that. And so in my case, we just kept niching down. When I very first started, I thought I was talking to entrepreneurs but then I realized my own uh, previous success was in the direct sales niche. So I thought, well, that's network marketing. But then I thought, well, no, that includes MLM and all that. So then I said, okay, just direct sellers. And then I went, okay, no, it's actually party plan direct sellers. So it was like, how much smaller could I keep niching down until I could own that niche and I could become the trusted authority in that niche? Because then once you're the trusted authority in that niche, it becomes very easy to grow out from that. But if you're speaking to everybody, I always like to use the, uh, the analogy of if you're saying, I, I'm a social media expert, I can help you with your social media. Well, throw a stone and you're going to hit a social media expert. But if you say, I do social media for dentists, now every dentist hears you and goes like, well, that must be the person I'm supposed to work with. So own that niche. And I think that was the, probably the biggest shift for me in my own marketing and switching you know, outside of the obvious mindset thing, since that's my thing, right? So I saw a couple of people nodding their heads. I'm going to, I saw Natalie and Joel, I saw you guys nodding your heads. What were, what were you thinking about? I think it was when she mentioned something about niching down. Well, for us, I think for every entrepreneur, even when we, we've done many different businesses, but I think it comes down to clarity on who you want to work with and who your tribe really is. Cause once you develop that clarity, then it's a lot easier to reach them. It's a lot easier to become the expert in that specific niche. And I could, I agree hundred percent with Dana that that is one of the best things that any entrepreneur can do is really understand who your clientele, who you want to work with, who inspires you, who's going to motivate you as an entrepreneur and who is your tribe. Cause they're going to understand you and you're going to understand them to be able to really change them. And at a practical level, what happens, because we work with co coaches a lot um, and we're always, always, always preaching niche down as much as you possibly can and they get resistance. Well, it's like, well, it's too small of a pie. It's like, yeah, but then you actually know what pie you're going towards instead of trying to get everybody, which never works. And I also wanted to say as far as like when we first got started, you know, kind of building off what Paul said is that um, he's absolutely right. It's like we look at it as planting a lot of seeds. Um, we tried a lot of different things. And then it's also pivoting. Even once we had businesses that were running, we were always still developing side hustles because you never know when something's going to change, when the industry is going to change. You don't know which ones are going to work. Um, and really, it's what I would add to that that we did was we just, you know, we had done a number of different side hustles. But the first time we really went all in, we just 100% went at it. We didn't have to know how it was going to work or make it perfect. We just, you know, like we contacted 600 local businesses in a month. Um, so it was just doing it. And I think that that's the thing that holds people back more than anything is they don't just start 
they wait till they know everything, which they're never going to know because most of it, everyone I'm here would probably agree. It unfolds in a way you wouldn't expect. So if you're waiting till you know what's going to happen, then you're going to be waiting for the rest of your life. So embrace failure. So <laughs> fail often and as quickly as possible at the beginning so you know what works and what doesn't work and take those failures as an opportunity for growth. So I love that. And it just reminds me that, you know, you mentioned you can't know everything before you start. I would, and I would like, I'd pay money to, to, to connect with somebody and talk to somebody who did, you know, it was like, Oh yeah, I knew it all. I, I studied it all. And then I just, because I studied it for so long, I, I, this is, this is why I crushed it. I'd be like, okay, that's really impressive. I need to understand how you learn because that was amazing. But what I found is, especially in this space, things are moving so fast. You have to be able to implement, test things out and you can, you can fail fast and you can fail very small with very little risk or downside risk. And I think that's like a critical element of anybody trying to get anything started really. Um, yeah. And, and Julianne, you, you were, you were not in your head. You'd, I think it was a little bit earlier when we're talking about niching, but I'm just curious what your, your thoughts are on this. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I would say I kind of came in onto the, into the online marketing world, kicking and screaming because uh, I had a very successful speaking career. And uh, at the end of 2008, when the recession hit, uh, my, my industry at least said, that's an expense we don't need right now, can't afford. And I went from about 50 speaking engagements in 2008. And at the end of that year, I had none for 2009, like zero. And I was a single mom with a mortgage and two little boys. And so what I was going to say is, you know, yeah, the, 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 the avatar work, the niche work is really important. And it's the part that everybody goes, oh yeah, I know that stuff. And you know, what, what I do with my clients is say, you think, you know, you don't really know. And even if you do know, you have to get inside that person's skin. You have to become so intimate with not only what they, who they are, where they are, you know, where they hang out. Cause that's what I asked myself in 2009. Like I got to get my message out. It's not going to be from the stage. Where are my people? And that was the beginning of Twitter and Facebook. And you know, I was kind of an early adopter and, and I got that, but also it's what are the, what are the pain points of my niche? What are their fears? What problem am I going to solve for them? I, I call that my superpower. It's the thing that I do best for me. It's launches and, you know, creating an online course out of your expertise, but what is it that they're saying every day? Oh man, if I only knew how to do that, this is really frustrating. I can't figure this out that I can bring to them. And, you know, I wrote, there was 2009, I wrote an ebook the beginning of January of that year. And I paid my bills in January and I thought, okay, well, I'm going to be onto something here. And so, and, and the ebook came out of that question. What is it that they need? And that's, that's what I spoke to. So it's not just defining your niche. It's getting inside their skin and really understanding what their pain point is and how your superpower can solve that. I, I love that. And I'm, I'm going to dovetail actually in, in and shift this over to Carrie for a second, uh, because this is, this is interesting because it's not just about knowing who you're targeting. I, although I think that's like a critical piece of it and, and niching down is like, it's that difficult conversation you have to have with yourself. Cause you're like, Oh, I don't want to be pigeonholed, but you will never get anywhere. I don't think unless you, you do that to some degree. But the second piece is I think the actual business model that's associated with it, Paul, you kind of touched on this, which is like, you started with digital products and it was like kind of hitting your head against a wall when you're first getting started. Cause it's such a hard thing to start from scratch, but it turned out con coaching, consulting, you know, where you're, you're giving your time in exchange for dollars is a much faster, easier path to start making money. So kind of shifting to, to Carrie, Carrie, you did a number of side hustles and you only recently, like last month, if I'm not mistaken, or this was it this, no, last month you quit your job. So you August, did, August yeah. 1st, I quit my job. August 1st, you quit your job. So you did something. Yay. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so awesome. It's such a great story. Uh, but well, you know, you did something differently this time than what you had done in the past. And so tell us a little bit about some of those, maybe briefly, like some of the things you tried that didn't really work for you and why InfoStack and kind of this, this, this business model that you created is working. So, yeah. well. uh, yeah, it's very interesting because, uh, yeah, I, I've done a lot of different things. Uh, you know, I've, I've written 12 nonfiction and eBooks, self-published on Amazon. Um, you know, I tried uh, a couple of different courses, you know, to creating a couple of different courses and marketing those and, you know, didn't really get much of anywhere. Um, and, um, you know, I think it was because one of the reasons was because I'd, I was, I was simply, you know, let's find a topic and I'll create a course on it and throw it out there. And, you know, I wasn't really an expert in it. I'm just, I, you know, I was just trying to make money, you know. Um, and, um, and then I, I, I hit on this, on this idea of the, of the bundles 
And one of the things that I think that was an epiphany about this business model that we're doing uh, is that because the, the whole time I was, I've been online over, you know, whatever it's been six, seven, eight years, whatever it's been, um, the, you know, the mantra has been go and build that list, which is, which is awesome for, for, you know, uh, for certain uh, business models. Right. Um, but one of the things that, that was a, a real epiphany for me in talking to Tom, when we were first getting into this thing is that, with our business model, we're not trying to build a list. We're, we're using other people's lists and, and structuring the, the, the launch towards, hey, this, thing is, this thing's got a ton of content. It's really cheap. Buy it now. Here we go. Boom. And, and we're going to end up building a list out of that over a period of time. But, but the main focus is not building that list. So... Um, it's a, it's a curation strategy fundamentally. Yes. So it's saying instead of me being the expert coming out here, cause you know, if you don't feel like an expert, I think, and that's kind of, I think the point to take away here is there are people that actually have been really successful self-publishing. There are people who've been really successful, you know, creating a course and scaling that like crazy. And I always, you know, and, and the grass is always greener. So I'm always like envious of some of these people who've done that. I'm like, Ooh, that's really good. I should be doing more of that. But what you realize is like, some things just like, will will fit better for you. And, and whatever your personality, it doesn't mean you shouldn't try these things out because you had to try a few different things before you came to this conclusion, Carrie, and then tried it out. Exactly. And it turned yes. out your superpower, which was mentioned earlier, it wasn't, maybe wasn't coming in and like writing the book and trying to be that expert and trying to grow a personal brand so much as, hey, maybe I can just curate. Maybe I can curate great material, great books, great courses, great people, great software, great services, put them all together, be a conduit for sales. Uh, so just be like that, that middleman between like the audience and the actual, you know, and the, and, and the, and the product itself, not actually creating the product. So it's just in, interesting to me because it's one, it's a different business model. It's different. We, you know, we've talked about coaching, consulting, we've talked about this obviously as a bundle. I know Natalie and, and Joel, you guys run this like huge Academy, which is like a membership site program. Right. And so it's like all these different models that can work for different people. You just have to be willing to actually put yourself out there and test out things. And also just be, I think cognizant of like, what you really care about, what you actually enjoy um, while you do it, because otherwise you'll get burned out too. That's what I was going to say is that to to what Joel was saying a minute ago is, you know, is kind of find that thing that resonates with you. Find, you know, find that, um, that model that, that fits for you. Um, And, and if it's a, if it's creating a course around a, you know, around an expertise that you have uh, and building a list then then perfect. And then, go for that. And, and I would say that I just wrote down in my notes, focus. I think that's one thing that, that helped me that that's, that's been one of the keys for me is to not be, you know, over here, over here, over here, writing this book, trying to create a course up here. You know, I, I quit everything and focus totally on this, on this info stack thing and, and, and really focused in on that. And that's, I think that's one of the keys to it as well. And I would say that that was the case. Like once you decided that this was Once you're like, okay, I'm pretty sure I, you had had the experience enough to know when you saw this kind of structure and talk and work through it, it was like, this is going to work for you, but you also had to do it first. You tested it out. And and I would actually agree that like you were very focused when I saw you kind of roll this thing out for the first time, the first campaign, but it was only after that where it was like, that did so well. It's like now go all in. I think that's also like a, a, you know, a challenging conversation to have because it's kind of scary. It's like, if I go all in on this, am I missing out on all these opportunities? But you obviously, you know, it was like, this is the thing that matters. This is what I want to scale. So that's kind of an exciting point to get to, I think, is uh, yes, exactly. you know, from the side hustle to, to focusing in. And this is like a new business that you just built from scratch. It's just wild. But Paul, you, I think you had a comment on this. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was listening to what Kerry was saying. And I want to build on something he said about like doing what resonates with you and kind of, I guess, yeah, like uh, that advice of following your passion a bit. And um, to anyone listening, I would say you will often be surprised by what works and, and what you succeed with. So in my case, uh, when I first thought, what kind of consulting can I do? I actually went on a website some people may have heard of, uh, Clarity. And it's this dial an expert service. And it was a really great way to validate my idea. And I just threw up a bunch of skills that I had like, oh, I know about Asana. And actually on Asana, for example, I actually had experience using that tool at the company I was working at full time. We had been looking for a project management tool. I'd found Asana and kind of just being a productive guy, I sort of took the lead on working out how to use it and training the team and, and rolling it out. In, in the company I was currently working at. And so I just threw this up, not really expecting much of it. 
And I was really surprised when people started booking calls. So yeah, definitely try and find what, what resonates with, with you, what you're going to enjoy, but we but think outside the box. Cause I think, yeah, you'll be surprised by what works. And, and uh, I didn't by no means thought of myself as like an expert, but, um, you don't have to know a lot to be an expert. Just, you just need to know a little bit more than the people you're trying to help. Uh, so yeah, think outside the box a little bit. I had a few few people that I, were like a lot of a lot of head nods. So I'm going to try to get to everybody. Natalie, I think you were you were one, and then Dana. So I want to get to both of you guys real quick. But let's start with you, Natalie and Joel. Well, one of the things that Carrie was saying that I really resonate with, and one of the things that helped us grow fast uh, was the collaboration piece. You know, uh, and I think that's very important for any entrepreneurs to understand that it's not just about you. That if you can collaborate with other people it can exponentially grow your business a lot faster. For example, with our magazine, it was really a collaboration between authors and different people in the community. When we started our book publishing company, we worked with 100 different authors uh, and coaches to create those. When we did conferences, instead of us just being speakers at an event or something like that, we brought in like 10 different speakers that were very well known, so they brought in their audience. And even with some of our courses, we partner with people. We do all these things because we know there is power behind working in a community. So whatever you're doing is to make sure that you develop a community that's going to help you grow a lot faster than you could ever do individually. Yeah. I love that. Dana, I think you had some comments on that. Yeah, well, that's a great point, Joel. And I also was kickstarted from uh, Carrie's comments when he was talking about find your delivery method, like find the thing that, you know, as Julianne called it, your superpower. And I also wanted to say that also for, for what I teach anyway in Train Your Brain, that applies to marketing as well. I think we live in a world right now where everybody's like, you need to be live streaming, you need to be on YouTube, you need to be on Snapchat, you need to be yes. on Pinterest, you need to be podcasting. And instead of just just, you know, there's that phrase that everybody says, get out of your comfort zone. Well, I like to say, get into your comfort zone. Get the thing that you're already good at, that you already love to do, and do that and nail that. Make that your thing. Like, just get to know it inside and out. And then when you own that, it's, it's so easy to make a name for yourself because you're not distracted by all these other things that people are telling you have to do in order to be successful. That's awesome. I love it. And so Johnny, you were, you were nodding your head. What are your, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah. You know, I've been talking to Dana before and been on her show and she knows that we, I talk about energy, you know, everything is about energy exchange. And here's a quote for you guys some people listening to everybody's an expert. Actually, this is something I wrote up some time ago. Everybody is an expert actually in the true energy signature that they are. They are because when you hit that chord, uh, you become the expert. You, it's like you channel your best self. So if you can hit that and work with that, everything will start to change. And since I've been working with you, Tom, too, uh, you've not been struggling with this before. So multitasking and not being focused, it won't bring you, you know, anywhere. It can bring you all over the place, but it's not the place you want to go. So I agree with the other people here. And multitasking has been my bad thing. Much because I'm changing focus, of course, into a new brand in a way, a new message, but also, um, you know, not knowing my message because I found that my way of teaching people about mindset and my self mastery concept, it was hard to describe those, the, the audience, actually, the people receiving that because I, I think it's still a little bit new. There's a breakout thing happening on the planet now when it comes to work and education. Who do we call those people, right? So that was my struggle. So, so the focus, like Harry said too, focus is insanely important. And also to hit your, your best self, your energy signature. I, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump on that one too, because I think it is, like focus is like, like profoundly important. But I think there's actually something to the idea of sometimes, especially if you're just getting started, just throw things at the wall. There's actually, it's actually okay. To, to try things out. And, and, and what's interesting too, is what I see with you, Johnny, is you're actually, you have, you're a Shopify expert and you've been doing Shopify work for a long time. And, and that was kind of a side hustle, I think. And then now you're side hustling a new thing while you've, you've built this other thing. So I think we're kind of all kind of maybe doing that too. Like it's always like maybe a new project we're trying to spin up or some way yeah. we're trying to grow something. So it never actually stops. That's what's kind of interesting about it. It's like, I don't know if, if I mean, t tell me, interject right now. If any of you are like, nope, like we're just doing our one thing. That's it. We don't experiment with anything else. 
It, I doubt it, right? It's like we're always- No, but it, the point I was making, Tom, or trying yeah. to make is that it's got to come from curiosity and joy yes. and like, oh, that looks like fun. I want to yes. try that. That sounds like me. You know, live streaming sounds like me or podcasting sounds like me rather than this idea of, oh man, if I'm not on Snapchat, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> you know, it's got to be from that. Like like we're talking here, that playfulness, that let's let's try this. Who cares if it fails? Let's just try it. In, in, in part of that nested with, in what, within what you just said was uh, like, I don't think you can force yourself to be interested in something, right? So there's something that just like bubbles up and it's like, I'm compelled by this. And so it's like, okay, if it is social media or some specific social media platform, it's like, yeah, try it out. Like try engaging in that. Also don't feel like you have to start like an Instagram story channel or whatever is like hot right now, you know, to succeed. Cause like a lot of this, you don't need it, but you can, there's great examples of people who cr are crushing it with that. You can also not even touch that stuff with like a 10 foot pole and be running, you know, seven figure business. And it, honestly, but, but I want to go to Laura here. I know you had a, a comment on this. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, Laura. Yeah. I mean, I've been at this game for a really, really long time. And I think it, it, it really is about finding that stuff that you love to do, the things that you're great at. And the, the challenge I think is that sometimes we, we don't value our superpowers because they're things that are so easy for us. We assume that they're easy for everybody else and that nobody wants to learn to do this because everybody can naturally do it. And so like, if you're really good at, you know, Facebook ads, you just think, well, gosh, Facebook ads are the easiest thing in the world. Everybody can do this. Nobody wants to learn from me. Right. And so look at the things that are super easy for you that come naturally that, that you just work on because they're fun and that you're engaged with. And those tend to be the things that you're going to be super successful at and that other people are going to recognize as your superpower. Like uh, other people can see that more easily than you can. Sometimes it's really nice sometimes to go poll your friends and colleagues and people that know you and say, what do you think I'm really good at? Right? Like what comes naturally to me? Because sometimes you can't see that. And I think, you know, to Dana's point, particularly with social media platforms, pick the one that you like, because the people that are like you that are going to gravitate towards you are there also, right? Like Facebook's my, that's my jam. I like Facebook. I post stuff on Twitter. We have stuff on LinkedIn. I got nothing on Instagram, got nothing on Snapchat. Don't care. I'm in Facebook. And guess what? My tribe is in Facebook too. And they're not all in, in all these other places as well. And so I think, you know, to that point of focus, you know, we, we do strategic plans and all of that. And, and one of the things we say is like, pick a couple of things and go deep on those and don't get seduced by, oh, this looks like fast money. Um, that's the place where I see people getting distracted. They're just trying to chase the cash instead of chasing the fun and the value and the, the finding ways that you can share your gift and help people, you will always get paid for that. And, and maybe to that point too, is like also thinking like, it, could I see myself doing this for the next few years at least? Like if it's like a get rich quick scheme, you might think to yourself, well, do I really want to be like cold emailing people to link back to my site nonstop? for like the next five years, you right. know, and then you might say, no, it's even if I got something from that, it's probably not worth pursuing directly. Maybe I should just take a step back and realize it's actually okay. That's the beauty of a side hustle. You have a full-time income or part-time and you're doing something on the side. You have, you have time so you can experiment, but you, and so that, that's, what's beautiful. Not only do you have time to experiment, but you can also think a little bit more deeply and say, yeah, these are the things I'm actually really kind of care about. This is where I'm compelled or drawn. And this is, this is where I, what I could see myself doing in the next three, three to five years. I think it's a good place to come from. But Julianne, I know you had a comment and then I'm going to go to Joel and Natalie over here, but I want to hear what you had to say about this, Julianne. Yeah. It's, you know, I, I, as I'm listening to all this brilliance here, um, there's that whole concept of, of FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. And, and I know for myself, if you're on too many lists, if you follow too many, you know, gurus, if, if you're, if you're getting constantly inundated, like we all are, um, there, there is this anxiety that can come up around, oh my gosh, you know, they're doing that. And I know that, that, you know, I, I've recently sort of rebranded, but you know, in, in my, in my other sort of entity, I had to just completely get off of the email list of my competitors because I would see, you know, so-and-so is doing a, a book club or a podcaster. And I'd think, oh, I got to get on that. And, and that, Somebody gave me really great advice one time. They said, you know, you do what you do best. Pick a path and, and stay on that path. And, and, and to that, I will also say for me, I'm really, I've, I've gotten really good at tapping in and listening to that, you know, still small voice that I call my intuition and really paying attention. And if I do start down a road that doesn't feel right, I'll stop and say, you know, this isn't, I, I mean, you know, I, 
I, I it just isn't working for me. I know that this is the person who everybody else is working their system and it's working great for them. But when I went and did it, it didn't feel right. And to Dana's point, you know, that that's really important. And, and you know, I mean, she's amazing. And, and we had a conversation about a month ago and I went to her and said that same thing. This just doesn't work out. And she said, what are you best at? Go do what you're best at. And I got focused and, you know, I'm going down that path. And then finally action. You know what? You got to just do, I mean, so many people talk about it and talk about it and plan and, you know, get everything in place and then they never take action. And the bottom line is if you don't ever take action, nothing's going to work. And so, yeah, get out there make mistakes, take action, listen to your intuition and find your path and, and, and walk that path. You can always change your mind down the road. But if you go to three different paths or 10 different paths at the same time, it's not going to work. I love it. Um, right on. So Natalie and Joel, I think you guys had a, a comment on that or, or one of the previous uh, points made. Well, one of the things I was going to say is that we talked about focus. And uh, for me, obviously, I, I come from a psychological background. So it's about being in the states of flow, because that's when everything happens when you're in that state. And the best way to get in that state of flow is being on purpose. So as an entrepreneur or as somebody that's creating a side hustle, you have to have a passion and feel like you're on purpose on what you're creating. And the beauty about starting a side hustle, if someone has a bit, you know, a job or something like that, and they're trying to start something on the side, is that it allows the opportunity to become clear of what they want. And that clarity for us as entrepreneurs, we've created many different types of businesses, but every time we've done something, we've got more and more clear of what kind of model works for us. And actually, I want to kind of play the devil's advocate a little bit. So the core of what we do with all of our clients, everything that we teach is about finding your purpose, walking your path. And that's what everybody's saying here. But I also want to point out that sometimes people just don't know what they want to do. All they know is they don't want to do what they're doing now. And that there's nothing wrong with trying a whole bunch of different things to see what you like. Like you said, you know, throwing it on the wall and seeing what sticks. There's also nothing wrong with doing a side hustle that you're doing just to make money if you know it's going to work because it can fund the one that you want to do for passion reasons. So I also don't want people to walk away from this feeling like, oh geez, in order to start a side hustle, I have to find my passion first because that might not happen for a while. Um, and so it's really about <laughs> both. It's about planting seeds, trying different things, and then really checking in with yourself to see what fits for me. And of course, if you have something that you're really passionate about that you love, then that's a good place to start. But you also don't have to get stuck in one thing. If you try it and it doesn't work, you can do something else and then maybe come back to it later. I couldn't agree more. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. It's like, I feel the exact same way. And, and it, again, yeah, it's like, you don't have to, I definitely don't want anybody to feel that way. Like, oh yeah, okay. I have to do what I'm passionate about. It's like, and if you're just like, I'm not really passionate about anything, it's like, where does that leave you? And, and you can't produce passion. You can't produce interest. It's not like you, you can make yourself interested and excited about something. I disagree. I'll put my hand up. So Dana, you can come in. Challenge me. <laughs> You could go. I was gonna say, bodies, oh, that's not gonna fly back. with Dana. I'm just waiting. You for can it. come back. You can come back. That's all no, right. No, I want to hear it now. So I. Well, really here's welcome. here's the thing. Like you know, the first stop for anything, or in the in the methods that we teach, is mindset's the first stop, and we teach something what we call intentional action. Get your mindset right first then take action. So in other words, most of us can agree that when you feel good, when you're happy, and when you feel good, you uh, feel like taking action. You know, you get excited about something, you feel like taking action, you show up better, you get better results, you get in flow, just like Joel was talking about. You, things turn out better for you. You uh, like people better, they like you better, you feel like engaging, you meet with success, you open up the creative pathways of your brain so you have access to better ideas. And so part of the reason why I'm I'm so passionate about mindset. Well, that's my thing is because I think the world now is saying that the way you're successful, it's about action. And I don't disagree with that. The, the piece that I think people are missing is that you can generate mindset by thinking in your own head. You know, you're having a thought as you're hearing me say this, you're focused on this thought. You can only think one thought at a time. You get to choose what that thought is. And it, I'm not saying you have to walk around being like, I'm a happy, abundant, healthy, wealthy person. You know, nobody can live like that. But you can have thoughts like, okay, I'm not successful right this second, but I'm hopeful that I will be. But I'm open to continuing on. But I'm trying. Like, we need to be our own best cheerleaders. We need to be, talk to ourselves like we would talk 
to our friends. If our friends came to us, say, I'm afraid I'm not going to make it in my side hustle. We wouldn't go, yeah, you're a loser. You should quit. We would say like, no, you're, you're going to do it. Take your time. Others have been where you are. You're figuring it out. You're better than you were a year ago. You know, we live in a world where we care about the car we drive, the neighborhood we live in, the clothes we wear, the food we eat. Oh my God, if I hear one more thing about the food you put in your mouth, but nobody talks about the thoughts you think in your head, the quality of the thoughts you think in your head. And if you make that your first stop, you know, thinking those quality thoughts and making that your priority, taking actions like nothing because you're living in this state. You're living in a state I'm in now where it's like, hold me back from action, right? (laughs) So that's my two cents on creating your own passion. Yes. Now I'll be quiet the rest of the time. (laughs) And I'm going to clarify a piece because maybe it got miscommunicated. Um, What I was saying is, I agree with that. It's like, I think you should, I think you should be in love with like the, the why behind it, but not the specific area of interest. That, that's what I was getting at was, I, agree. I don't think I, you have to be like passionate about a specific subject or something like that. No, I, I totally agree. And I'm not disputing that you shouldn't try a bunch of different things and you shouldn't do all those right. things. But I'm saying that if you want to generate passion, you can at any time, you can generate any emotion you can and want to at any time if you have the desire. That's awesome. So Johnny, I know you had a, a And you know I love you so much, Tom. So oh, you can never no, that's why I like it. That's why I, that's good. Put it out there. Yeah, baby. Let's get it. Let's do it. <laughs> Johnny, what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I was with uh, Dana on that because um with her, yeah, and we have talked about this before. Um I wrote an ebook called The Seven Steps to Self Mastery, and I talk a lot about programming because this is what she's talking about. We are programmed from our past. So whatever we believe becomes truth, right? So it's about that. So I wanted to mention that. And programming is based on our past, but it can still be reprogrammed. So reprogramming is a powerful thing that we can do. But the second thing I wanted to mention that we talk a lot about online business, anything digital, you know, social platforms and emails and all that. But I want to say that for my part, I think that my strength is showing up in person. So don't forget that for anybody thinking yep. that can start a yeah. side hustle because when I become present with a person, there's an energy exchange and uh, I know that I influence the impact and leave a kind of a kind of an imprint on, on the other person just by being present. That's my strength. Yeah. So it's not always being behind the desk and shipping out all kind of crap. If you can't be present, maybe it won't be, you know, it won't work for you. Yeah, and I'll I'll say one comment real quick, and then hand it over to uh, to Joel and Natalie. And you guys had had some comments on this, but you know, on that piece, it's beautiful. Kind of fits right in. It's like there are so many ways to start something, and you don't have to feel like you need to hide behind like an email or a social media account or something like that. There's in person stuff you can do, or just at least or virtually, uh, you know, video type stuff, one to one. I mean, there's so many opportunities. But I love that you kind of you pinpointed it. It's like that's what you're good at. That's what you should be focusing on now that you know that that's what you're good at and that's what you care about. That's what feels right to you. So I love it, Johnny. Thank you for that. But Natalie and Joel, you guys had a comment there, I think, when, when Johnny started speaking. Yeah, actually, um, I just wanted to point it out that I love that so many people are bringing up mindset because even though some people look at us as what we're doing is we're teaching people about business, like the core of everything we do is mindset. Um, and we, you know, we come from a personal development background first and foremost. Um, and the reason why that's so important is also like bringing it back into the, the whole topic of the niche is that the people who are going to be participating in this program are coming from a lot of different backgrounds. Um, it's, not, it's not one niche of people, especially because, you know, all the people participating are inviting their own people to participate. Um, and that some people are going to be coming to this because they're, they already know that they're entrepreneurial and they're going to be looking for that spark of insight for that next opportunity but then other people might have always worked a job and just the idea that they can make money on their own is is outside of their reality at this point um and so i just love that i just want anyone who's listening to this to understand that no matter what background you come from that focusing on your mindset and learning about that even outside of everything you might learn in this program is the biggest thing that's going to make the difference. Um, that's going to make you able to make that transition. If you do want to go from just a side hustle to actually escaping the rat race, you're going to have to change the mindset because it's, it's very different. And I just love knowing that everybody here, like you can get that from these people. 
And one thing I would just add real quick is that what helped me transition from like being an employee to having a side hustle and then from a side hustle to being like a full blown entrepreneur is really information. It's investing in myself, joining programs, getting around people, people that would plant seeds with, with like books, eBooks and all these things. And that's why I love the stack. And that's why I love all of us being together because we all bring something of value to everyone that's listening and everyone that might join our program. And really what happens is that all those people planted different seeds within me, helped me see opportunities that I couldn't see at the time. And those seeds grew with time and helped me now create many different successful businesses. So thank you for putting this together. Hey, thank you guys. I mean, that's awesome. I reminded me that when I first got started, it was uh, an ebook that I released that I made it pay what you want. And I let people choose the price they wanted to pay. And I, I had been writing for like several months, like on the side, you know, just trying to like, you know, start this blog. But one of the things that I did was one, I read a ton of blogs. I was reading a ton. I was listening to podcasts and then I was investing in different courses and programs, spent a lot of money. I made it back. How many t- times fold? I don't, I don't even know. Um, but it's like, it's, it's so worthwhile because it's easy to discount what you can get from a course or a book. But I, I think that's, it's so short sighted because it can be the, the spark, even one idea in the ebook or one, one, one way that a, a, a course or training program presents a, a piece of information that just clicks for you. Or, and, that, and then I think that also ties into community and being surrounded by people and connecting with people who are also trying to do it too. Because man, it gets tough. Like I, I've had to grind it out. Maybe, maybe you guys haven't had that experience, but where things just got so hard, I, I did want to quit, but it was like being surrounded by other people who were also doing it made me think, you know, I can, I can hang on, I can keep going and, and maybe it's going to, and, and it'll be worth it because these other people are doing it. You know, they're, they're no, they might be smarter than me, but they're no better looking. So I know I can do it <laughs> if they can do it. Right. So we had a couple of people raise their hands. Carrie, I wanted to go to you real quick and then we'll come back to, to Johnny and then we'll do a quick wrap up. Uh, I want to do a quick, like one tip that you would give to the listener right now who's just getting started. So you guys can be thinking about that, but we'll start with Kerry. Go ahead. You had a comment here. Yeah. I just want to uh, uh, back up something that, uh, that Joel was just talking about. Uh, and that is that um, I spent a ton of dough <laughs> on courses and stuff. Uh, and, and I can remember thinking, am I out of my mind? You know, spending the $2,000 on this, you know, so, Oh my God. Or, or am I the sucker investing in something? Like that? <laughs> exactly. I, right. I thought that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, you know, but, but like you said, Joel, I mean, I got something from everything that I did and you know, the, the idea that I got for the, for the infostock.io was me going back through a course that I had taken a year ago and I had, you know, I was at a point where God, now what am I going to do? Oh, well, I, I guess I still have this thing on my, on my computer. I guess I'll go back and just seemed like there was some good stuff in there. I'll go back and look at it. And, and boom, there was information in there that just, it, it clicked. So, yeah. So, I mean, uh, you know, I think, um, you know, don't spend money you don't, you don't have, which I did, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, don't be afraid to, to invest in yourself and, and go out and, and, and get that information, get the, get the education that, that you need and, and, uh, and make it work. The other quick thing I wanted to mention too, I don't, I forget who mentioned it, but it was about action. And I wanted to mention that back in June when we did this this first launch, I had no idea. I was telling Tom, I had virtually no idea. I had run uh, projections where where it showed I was going to make you know a thousand dollars, and I had run other projections that showed that it, you know I was going to make two hundred thousand dollars. I had virtually no idea what was going to come on, uh, but you know you just take action. You just take that next step and just keep going and, and, and see what happens. What I perceive from you, Carrie, too, is just, just in time learning. So like, I yes. think that's the balance here because you know, there, there's, there's two parts. There is action that's important. Mindset is critical too. And, but, and so together it's like, and, and information, but learn as much as you need right now, start implementing it. And, and Carrie, you like use that. You like learned one thing and you just kept, you were obviously compelled to keep learning and you saw these new things. So you kept investing in, in new courses, new training and, it's led you to where you are now, but knowledge has a compounding effect that I think we take for granted, like, or, or maybe you don't, or maybe you don't even think about it at all, but knowledge actually compounds. It's not something that's like a linear thing. Like it actually compounds. So the more you learn in a bunch of different spaces, the actually the more you, you can 
like it's not just a one pl one one plus one. It is actually like a, a, a kind of like square, a magnification, because now you can bring that to the table here and carry your experience writing and then doing some of the arbitrage work you had done and then doing some of the ads that you had done, like kind of led you to figure out all these different kind of fundamental pieces. But then you still have to keep investing in yourself and keep mm -hmm. learning and implementing as you were going to do this. And you, you know, you say you had no idea, but you had a good idea because you had built the foundation little by little. And I think that's just so critical. So Thank you, Carrie, for, uh, on, and for starting this, for putting it together, for founding this thing, because I think you're just bringing amazing things to people, like, and by bringing this group of people together, have, us having this conversation. Cool. And for, for those who are listening to it, for those who are contributing, I know it's a huge value. And look, you're, you're a living proof. And I love that. I love that. So what Thanks. I want to do is quickly go around the horn. Um, and I, I want to ask if you guys have a closing thought, it could be either something where closing thought, closing statement, or if you have like a tip trick or something for somebody who's just getting started, what they should be thinking about or how, what they should do next. Um, Johnny, I think you're, you're up next here. I'd like to hear from you. I will be quickly sharing one fresh example and I'll try to be quick with that. For the last three months, I have been doing coaching with a girl in Serbia not the easiest place to try to make a living. She is stuck in a small apartment with her mother. She's really struggling. She's been crying on her calls uh, for th three times. She don't believe in anything, but about mindset and networking, connecting with this one person in her life, which have been me now, she expanded so much that she's totally transformed. Now she's starting to smile. Her energy has shifted. Her diet has shifted. Her mindset and programming have shifted and she actually believes that she can now become a podcast advisor one person is what it takes for you to to shape your course from now on and create a site also i love it johnny thank you man dana were you gonna say something yeah i was just gonna say that gave me goosebumps johnny that's a good that's really good well, we'll, we'll go, go to you. Do you want me to go? Yeah. Let's okay. Go. So first of all, I want to say a huge thank you to Carrie and Tom for pulling this together because I cannot believe what's in this stack and the value. And oh my gosh, if I would have had the opportunity to have access to something like this when I was starting, it's just incredible. So I think you're both brilliant and I'm honored to be a part of it. Um, my parting little tidbit of advice is just going to piggyback on what I said before. Most entrepreneurs, they spend their days bouncing back between frustration, hope, frustration, hope, frustration, hope, frustration, hope, and they don't necessarily gain a lot of traction or forward movement. And what I would like to suggest is, you know, you may have moments where you're angry or frustrated or depressed or all of that, and it's okay. We all get there and just own it and it's fine, but just know that you don't have to stay there. And, and be easy on yourself through this journey. You know, you, you don't necessarily have to be bouncing off the ceilings in bliss every minute of every day, you know, and, and you know, uh, knowing and ecstatic bouncing off the walls. But just try to make it your mission to stay more hopeful and to be, go easy on yourself and keep yourself in kind of that momentum and feeling of hope. Because if that's your number one stop and if that's your number one goal, you're going to see that everything else you do in your business is going to be easier and you're going to be using your best brain. So that would be my parting tip. I love it. Thank you, Dana. And Laura, I think you, you were nodding along. So what are your thoughts? On yeah. This yeah. Time? You know, kind of like Carrie, I've bought everything under the sun and I can tell you the only ones that work are the ones that I've actually used. And um, the rest of them are crap. If you don't use them, they're absolutely the worst thing ever. And so, I mean, I think the investment in InfoStack in the Side Hustle Toolkit is just, it's a no-brainer. I mean, you've made it so accessible for everybody. And so my, my tip is, you know, go look through all these things and find the one that speaks to you the most right out of the gate and put all the other ones on the side and just dive in and do whatever it says to do. Fill in the workbooks, do the exercises. If it tells you to go stand on your porch naked, go stand on your porch naked, right? Just do whatever it says and, and really implement it because you, you, we talk about this thing called the ictavirus. I know that already. And so sometimes you read stuff and you think, oh, I know that it's common sense, whatever. But unless you could implement it, unless you could actually do it, you don't really know it, right? It's like you think you know CPR, you think you could do it until somebody's dying on the floor and you've got to get down there and, and save their life and do it the right way. That's when you know you know it. And so it, it, the people that put these things together know what they're doing and they've put these exercises and these, these actions in place because they know that if you do this, it works. So don't just 
read through it or listen through it. Do the work and put it into action. And you will see that every single thing in this, this toolkit works. It does what it says it will do if you use it. I love it. Great. And it, it mm-hmm. totally resonates with me a hundred percent. Natalie and Joel, what, what are you guys' thoughts on this? So my, my thought is that invest in yourself. And I'm not talking about just investing in what you spend, but also your time. You know, when you look at how much people spend on social media, watching TV and all those things, you can have all that time and it would equal, I looked at some studies, it would equal to having a full t- another full-time job for six months out of the year. So what are you doing with your time? If you want to create a side hustle, if you want to have some freedom in your life, what are you doing with your time? And what steps are you actually taking to move yourself forward? The other part is like we talked about before, invest yourself in yourself. Instead of spending that money in coffee or eating out or going to the movies all the time, all that stuff, invest in the things that are going to help you grow, that are going to give you the knowledge and plant the seeds for you. Because sometimes all you need is that one thing, you know, and I come from poverty and I come like growing up with my mom. Sometimes we'd be basically have nothing. You know, when we first met, we had an inflatable bed. That's all we had to our name. And now we have the freedom to travel whenever we want, help our family financially. We live on the beach and love our lives. We're not unicorns or something special. Is that we invested in our time and something that was going to help us grow. We also invested our money into things that were going to help us plant the seeds for a better tomorrow. So invest in yourself. And I just want to reiterate not to wait until it's perfect, not to wait until you're sure, and not to wait until you feel certain and warm and fuzzy about it because this might be scary. And so you do want to get your mindset in the right place, meaning this is something that I want and I'm determined, but it doesn't mean you're going to sit around and wait until it feels good because it might not. You just have to try it and you have to trust that if you try something, if you keep doing it, it gets easier. If you keep doing it and you like it, the passion develops. And so it gets easier with time. You just have to get started. Yep. I love it. It is so true. It's like a compounding effect of like doing it. And the better you get, the more you'll like it. That's the other thing. I think uh, a good secret to Dana might challenge me on this too. Uh, But passion would be, I think the better you get at something that you say you're kind of interested in or the more fun it becomes. That's why I become more passionate about this stuff was like, okay, I'm actually improving. I'm actually getting better at this, but it's like little by little by little. And it does compound. But Julianne, I know you had a a comment on this. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Oh, I should have gone first because everybody else. (laughs) I'm like, oh, okay, I'll say that. Okay, wait, now I got to think of something else because she just made that point better than I would. So thank you, Natalie and Dana. (laughs) Um, You know, I think really, first of all, you guys are curators. That's how I look at this. And when you first approached me, Tom, I was just so excited to be part of this because, you know, it's like those boxes of clothes that come every month that you can like keep what you want, you know, send the rest back. It kind of feels like that for business education. And, you know, just like all the rest of you guys, I've spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on things that I, that have made me better and helped me become a better, you know, online entrepreneur for the last 10 years. And the truth is it's hard to sort through that sometimes. And so I feel like you guys have done that for us. And the fact that, you know, this is a specific stack for the side hustle, you know, community or, or, you know, trajectory, that's awesome. But don't get overwhelmed. I mean, I, I, I've seen it. I opened it and I, I was just like drinking from a fire hose, right? There's so <laughs> much amazing information in that stack. And so what I, my advice would be kind of what Laura said, decide, okay, you know, maybe sit down for 15 or 20 minutes and, and look at where you want to be in six months or, or, or where you're hoping that this side hustle is going to take you. And what's the first thing that you need to be able to figure out? Maybe it's, how do I set up a Facebook group? Or maybe it's, you know, how do I learn how to blog? Or maybe it's, you know, how do I launch whatever idea that I already have in place? Figure out what you need, maybe the first two or three things, and then make a plan. You know, sit down and say, I'm going to go through this course first, and then I'm going to go through this one, and I'm not going to get distracted by a squirrel and go this way. I'm going to stick with my plan. And, you know, I think that will, will help eliminate that whole, I'm so overwhelmed, I'm just going to run screaming from the room and not do anything, because I know that that can happen as well. So stick with it, make a plan, stick with it, and really go through that in a, in a, in a deliberate way. And, and implement as you're learning. That's the other thing. I know that a lot of us are learning junkies. And if you don't take it and then implement it, once you learn it, it's never going to do any, any good for you. So learn it, implement it, and then move on to the next course. I love it. Focus. And, and again, I like that too. And probably part of this is like in terms of like kind of dealing with the side hustle toolboxes, you have a lot of these resources. Yeah, again, if, if you're compelled or interested in one of them, like start with that. 
and try to focus on that. If you want to start, you know, two or three at a time, that's, you know, kind of limit yourself. Try, try to do two or three at a time, but go from there. Try to really get, get into it and go, don't try to op- go through every single thing at one time. Okay. That's like the recipe for disaster. I agree. So you got to limit it to just start with a few and go from there. Okay. But I love that. Great, great advice. Uh, let's see. We have Paul. You're not our last commenter, are you? I don't I think, think so. I think I might be. So, no, Maybe. I don't know. I'll try and think yes, of something yeah. fresh. Yeah. <laughs> my, my closing advice would be uh, to just find the routine that works really well for you. Because in the beginning, starting a side hustle, you're not going to have a lot of time to, to work on your business. You're going to have to get up early or you know, work a little bit, bit later into the night. And so just try and find and, and get into a really consistent routine, something you can sustain because you're only going to have 15, 20 hours a week max maybe t- to work on your side business. And so to your point, Tom, it really is about in the beginning, your only goal is not to reinvent the wheel. It's not to make a lot of money. It's just to make consistent progress every single day or and then every, every single week. Um, even if that's just small little things, that's all you're going to achieve in the beginning. So just, um, I guess in a sense, set, set your expectations a little bit lower. Uh, just focus on making that little bit of progress. It's funny. Um, when I go to, I, I do Olympic lifting in my spare time and my coach, he's, he's an Olympic lifter. He's been to um, the Olympics. He was at the Commonwealth games recently. And he said, uh, every day when we come in, he, sa- he says to everyone, what did you achieve today? Everyone says, I learned this, I did this, and it's great. And I just say, I just made a little bit of progress. That's it. Um, it's just micro amounts every single day. So that's my, that's my number one tip is just find your routine, focus on little uh, bits of progress. And I just want to finish by saying thanks to Kerry and Tom for putting the stack together. Um, I think the, resource, uh, the, the collective value that's being offered here is insane. And I think it's too cheap. Uh, you could quadruple the price or add a zero to the price and it would still be an insane deal. So um, definitely everyone listening, jump on this deal because it's, it's actually incredible. Thank you, Paul, so much. Kerry, I'll let you do the closing remarks here. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say really just thank you guys so much. It's just an amazing group of people right here. Um, I, I mean, you know, you make a great mastermind, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I guess, I mean, just thanks very much. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, my closing arguments or arguments, my closing thoughts would be um, never quit and take action. Uh, uh, you know, it's just as simple as that. Uh, and, you know, if, if you do those two things, everything else is going to fall into place. Awesome. I can't, you know, you, you live by those words, Carrie. So it's not, not fluff. That's for sure. You mean it. And I've seen it firsthand. And I love it. So I love what you put together. Thank you for doing this. Thank you everybody for contributing to this, being part of this for everybody who's listening or watching this, you know, thanks for taking the time. I hope you got some value out of it. The next step is like, choose one path, start taking action, start learning and implementing and Hey, listen to this interview a couple more times if you need to, or this panel conversation for some inspiration. And of course, I know all of you guys uh, are, are pretty accessible. So when you do invest in, say, something like the Side Hustle Toolbox, when you connect, you can connect with everyone that's in this group right now. So if you're interested in hearing a little bit more from Dana or Natalie or Laura, et cetera, et cetera, like reach out to them, check, check out their, what they've offered, check out what they're teaching, and then connect with them. And I think that's that. So thank you all for being a part of this. I really appreciate it.